Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett here with your update on Hurricane Matthew for October 1st. We still have a very healthy Category 4 hurricane just north of Columbia, yet to make that northerly turn that we're waiting for. Visible satellite still shows a very healthy center of circulation as it continues to kind of meander off to the west-southwest. The Hurricane Reconnaissance Aircraft is investigating the storm right now and just found a central low pressure of 944 millibars, representing a very strong hurricane. We also just had another hurricane aircraft take off from McDill Air Force Base in Tampa Bay, and that is heading to investigate the storm as well. Here's the official track from the National Hurricane Center. We are expecting it to make that turn to the west-northwest sometime this afternoon or evening. Winds right now 140 miles per hour. Should remain a strong Category 3 or perhaps weak Category 4 hurricane as it continues to move off to the northwest, possibly brushing eastern Jamaica or even western Haiti, and then a direct impact on Cuba, eventually over the Bahamas. And right now, we still have eastern Florida and the cone of uncertainty, but it's looking a little more like the storm might continue to move off to the north northeast. Here's a look at the spaghetti plots. Still quite a bit of... Uh, disagreement among the models all the way from almost uh, the east coast of Florida all the way to well out in the Atlantic so quite a variance in the models but the consensus is still that we're looking at basically threading a needle between Jamaica and Haiti direct hit in Cuba going over the Bahamas and then a bit more uncertainty as we go off into the future here's Kingston Jamaica it's the populated part of Jamaica that could be the impact or larger impact on the Jamaica area from Matthew so something to watch out for for the folks in, in Jamaica. Here's Haiti, here's Cuba, looking at an impact in eastern Cuba, and then eventually riding up over the Bahamas. Here's a look at the water vapor imagery. Notice that we have a bit of an area of dry air here over Jamaica and Cuba. That could stunt the growth of Matthew over the next 24 to 48 hours. Also notice that there's a bit of dry air up in basically Tampa Bay in North Georgia, Northern Florida, Alabama. So you may have noticed slightly lower humidity in parts of Florida and uh, Georgia this afternoon. This feels a little bit nicer outside. That won't really have an impact on the tropical system, just giving us a little bit nicer Saturday. All right, this kind of tells a story right here. We're gonna have a trough of low pressure in the Gulf. We're gonna have a high pressure in the Atlantic. And notice between those two, we actually have a southerly wind for the storm. What does that mean? That means the possibility of the storm sliding into the Gulf and slamming into the east or the west coast of Florida, perhaps into Tampa Bay. That has pretty much been taken off the table. Now never write anything off with hurricanes, but it is looking much more optimistic that the west coast of Florida will not have to worry about a direct impact from this storm. Of course that means no storm third storm surge threat, which is great news for the west coast of Florida. We'll continue to watch it for the Tampa Bay area, but again looking much more optimistic. There's a chance that we could see an impact in the east coast of Florida, so we'll have to continue to watch that as a possibility, or even the Carolinas and mid-Atlantic states, but with each model run it is looking like we're going to see a bit more of a northerly track, perhaps leaving Florida alone, which we're crossing our fingers for. Here's a look at the European computer model run. As we go through time, the storm rides up over the basically the central to eastern Bahamas, according to the European, and remains about 200 miles offshore of the east coast of Florida, still making it kind of breezy for most of Florida as the storm passes by, but really no direct influence other than large surf and perhaps some coastal erosion on the east coast of Florida. And then as we move into Saturday, the storm actually starts to take a bit more of a turn to the northeast, actually avoiding the Carolinas and then making a continued track off to the northeast, perhaps impacting Nova Scotia or Newfoundland. That is the European computer model. Here is the GFS computer model as we go through time. Same scenario, threading the needle between Jamaica and Haiti, direct impact into Cuba, and then the storm actually rides over the central Bahamas, perhaps, perhaps impacting the Nassau area with very strong winds. Again, the biggest threat for Cuba will probably be the rain. We're looking at the possibility for 20 inches of rain in parts of Cuba, which could lead to mud slides, landslides, and all type of flooding. That could actually be a bigger threat than the wind itself in parts of Cuba and maybe even Jamaica as well. All right, the GFS model actually takes the storm over the Bahamas, but remains east of Florida, but not by much, maybe by 150 miles or so 
as a perhaps category two or three hurricane and then continuing to move off to the north perhaps impacting the outer banks of North Carolina as a hurricane and then really giving uh, kind of disruptive weather for much of the mid-Atlantic states and New England as we head into the latter part of next weekend. But that's a week off and very low confidence in that track forecast with seven days to go. So we'll continue to watch that in the future. Right now, just more of a given that Jamaica, Western Haiti, Eastern Cuba, the Bahamas are looking at a strong impact from this hurricane. Florida will continue to watch it for the East Coast, but each and every model run looking a bit more optimistic. All right, that's it for now. I'll have another update tomorrow. Hopefully you guys can get out and enjoy this fairly nice weather on your Saturday. Have a great and safe afternoon.